Welcome back chem fans, welcome back to Chemistry the Right Way. Please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. You'll get an awful lot of chemistry knowledge just to help you along with all your coursework. Again, going from conceptual chemistry all the way through the collegiate chemistry. Right now we've got a 15 minute tutorial on a vocabulary term, or vocabulary terms should I say, from atoms through to compounds and everything in between. That is so frustrating as a chemistry educator that we don't get a fundamental grip on what this really means. Um, it's frustrating. You may find those terms difficult or not understand them. I've got to set that correct because it is, again, it's, it's so frustrating. It's simple, stick with me. Okay, <laughs> atoms, molecules, elements, compounds. So what we have here is really two sets of terms. Atoms and molecules go together in this sort of mutual relationship in the same way that elements and compounds go together. But it's difficult to cross that line. It's not impossible, not by any stretch of the imagination. But we're talking about different things, okay? So we've got to break that apart immediately. You've got to understand that the term atom and molecule go together. Those two are sort of, again, mutual. Elements and compounds do not work in the same way. You're talking about different things but there can be an overlap, okay? So that's where, we, that's where things get tricky. Atoms, molecules. Okay, first of all, atom. The term atom was coined originally, we think, by Democritus. And the idea, or the, the, the term, to say that Democritus is the father of atomic theory is like saying that George Lucas is the father of intergalactic travel. It's not the same thing by any stretch of the imagination. Democritus was doing a thought experiment, and his thought experiment was about this whole concept of if I have matter and I, and I, and I can break it apart, or you know, for instance, I can take a piece of paper and with a pair of scissors I can cut it, or with a knife I can cut it. What would happen if I continually cut? And the question that he got down to was, what happens at that fundamental end, and he's like, well, you can keep on cutting a piece of paper until eventually the piece of paper is just as thick or the piece of paper is just as large as the edge of the knife is. So how do you cut something with a knife edge that's exactly the same size? It's, it's completely correct, but it's just a philosophical idea, right? It's the idea that the knife edge is made of some bit of matter, but the knife edge is, does it go to an infinite point? If it does, then you should be able to infinitely cut things. But what happens if it doesn't? Then the knife edge can only ever be one piece thick, and that's the smallest piece you can ever cut. It's just a thought experiment. And so we get to this idea that atom, meaning indivisible, just comes from a philosophical idea. The actual father of atomic theory is someone called John Dalton, an English uh, mathematician, mathematics teacher, chemist, um, great man, um, but he just coined Democritus's term uh, for indivisible because atoms eventually go on to explain how we have something called a limiting reactant and how chemical ratios actually work. Molecule is just a collection of atoms. So let's take a look at this, right? Atoms are individual entities. So we got three atoms there. I, it doesn't matter what they are. They could be iron, like in the case of a knife. They could be uh, uh, helium. They could be titanium. They could be anything on the periodic table, right? But these guys are individual, non-bound, free entities. Molecules, on the other hand, are collections of atoms. So we've got the same three atoms, let's just say, but now instead of being dispersed and free to move, they're bound together, right? This is one molecule made of three atoms. In chemistry, we symbolize this in the following way. Here, I've got three A's, right? Here, if we assume the same atoms, A, I've got one. The thing is, just like in algebra, we don't write the one. 
Yeah. We just say the one is implied. A three. Three A's, three individuals, one individual, but it's made up of three distinct bits. Does that make sense? This is a molecule. Now, it operates as a single unit. It's bigger, certainly, takes up more space, greater density, all that other kind of stuff, sure. But this guy right here is where we have our molecule, our collection of these individuals. So what are elements and compounds? Well, elements and compounds are not quite this atomic fundamental piece, right? Like, like here we're talking about individual entities, right? I am made of, you are made of, the world is made up of atoms, right? And those atoms combine together form molecules and molecules form more complex molecules, etc., 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 right? Sure, like your DNA is an incredibly complicated molecule, but it's made up of individual atoms. <clears throat> Elements and compounds just refer to substances, like as in the types of things, right? Types of substance. Is it made of one kind of thing? Element. One kind. Or is it made up of multiple kinds? Two plus, two or more kinds. Right? One kind of thing versus two kinds of things. We're not talking about whether or not they're atoms or molecules. Over here we're just saying, ultimately, if I get a sample of potassium metal, or an iron bar, right? If it's just made of iron, chemical symbol Fe, if it's only made of that, it's an element. Or in other words, element means simple. As in elementary, my dear Watson. Simple, my dear Watson. An elementary substance means it's simply made up of one type of thing. That's it. Or in other words, if you try to break it down chemically, if, you, if you've ever sort of, you know, taken a look at a rock that comes up out of the earth, which is where a lot of this came up from, is something we call ores, um, O-R-E-S, right, ores. Uh, what chemists are interested in is what makes up this rock. And, and so slowly, slowly, by terms of chemical analysis, what, what chemists would do is um, especially ar around like the 18th century, 1700s, would be working to find out, okay, what is this made up of? What is this made up of? What are the ingredients? Effectively, it would be like taking a look at a, a chocolate chip cookie. You've got the chocolate chip cookie, and now what you do is you, you break it down to find out what it's made up of, right? And you've got so much flour and so much chocolate chip and so much sugar and so much vanilla, etc., etc. All those individual ingredients are the elements. But the cookie is the compound. A compound is anything, in this case, if we've got iron, we can mix iron with carbon and chromium and molybdenum, and we can make things called steel. Steel is a mixture, okay? Mixtures are a type of compound. Atoms, molecules, one thing. Elements, compounds. Elements, one kind of thing. Compounds, two distinct kinds of things. So let's take a look at that pernicious case of the overlap. And in order to look at the overlap, I gotta do nothing more than talk about just a simple glass of water. So, I'm gonna make a, a little Punnett square, right? I'm gonna make sure that things are mutually exclusive, right? You can't be an atom and a molecule. You're either a molecule or an atom. You can't be an element and a compound. You're either or. So with that, let's go ahead and make a simple Punnett square. So we can go atom, and then molecule. OK, 
Okay. And then here we'll put element and then compound. Right. And so the question is, whereabouts do we stand when we do these things? Right. Can you be an atomic element? Yes. Okay. Can you be an atomic compound? <laughs> yeah, it's a special kind of mixture, but it means not chemically bound together, right? Atom and molecule, atom individuals, molecules, chemically bound units of atoms. Okay, let's take a look at that glass of water for just a moment. See if we can bring it back to that. Glass. Water. I'll never not put the meniscus in. I don't know what it is. I'll never, I'll never not put the meniscus in. Okay. It's full of water. Basic chemical formula, which took a heck of a long time to actually explain, is H2O. And John Dalton, the father of atomic theory, was involved in this. It's a really cool story, actually. So, H2O is um, <coughs> a unit, as a unit, it's made up of two bits of hydrogen and one bit of oxygen. I'm just gonna draw it right here. So my two bits of hydrogen, I'll even put the little H's in, they are not bonded together, but instead they're bound to this oxygen bit, right? And so now, and it's got this bent angle to it that's super important. You should all know about it. Um, that's an individual entity. And what's actually water, the glass of water is literally full of these bits, these units of water. So the question is, is water an element, a compound, an atom, or a molecule? Where does it land on this, right? First thing you gotta understand is, when we talk about four elements, as in earth, air, fire, and water, there's a reason for that. If you were an ancient Greek, try breaking water down into its constituent parts. You'd find it impossible. Absolutely impossible. Quite frankly, humanity wasn't able to do it for almost 2,000 years, okay? Since it was first sort of realized. Water was believed to be an element. You couldn't break it down. See where I'm going with that? Right? We now know that you can break water down. It took really the uh, pioneering discoveries of electricity to be able to do that, but now we can freely break water down. When we do that, we find out it's made up of hydrogen and oxygen in a proportion of two parts hydrogen to one part oxygen. That's where we get the H2O from. But what is it? Is it an atom, a molecule, an element, or a compound? Well, here we go. It's just dead, it's dead simple, right? It's right in front of us. Is it an atom? And the answer is no, it's, it's not an atom, right? It cannot be an atom. It has to be a molecule. So we, 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 it cannot be these because it's made up of three atoms, okay? Three. So it has to be a molecule. The question is, is it a molecular element or is it a molecular compound? If the elements were all the same, it would be a molecular element. It's not because it's hydrogen and oxygen, two completely different substances. So it can't be a molecular element. It must therefore be a molecular compound, okay? Let's take a look at something that's a little bit in reverse. So water is a molecular compound. That's gonna be an awful lot of things, right? Most things are gonna be molecular compounds. There is, a there's, there's more nuance than that. There are things like ionic compounds, or there, there, are other, there are other nuances, but this is the fundamental piece. Let's take a look at another one, right? Let's take a look at air. So we're all breathing it. If you're watching this video, you are breathing air. So what's air? Well, the air is a mixture, right? 
The air is a mixture. It's a, it's a what we call simple mixture, so it can be separated via physical means. Mostly that's done via temperature. Cool air down. Very cold, but cool air down, and eventually all of the bits that it's made up of will reveal themselves. They will crystallize, solidify at different temperatures. We'll find it's mostly nitrogen. I'm going to put the formula up here for that. That's N2. It's uh, nice oxygen. Formula for that is O2. Okay. 76%, about 21%. That's water vapor. Up to 2%. Then it's um, argon, neon, noble gases. Uh, way down there is carbon dioxide. And so, just from the air, and there's other things, like there's other bits in the air, there's like sulfurous oxides, nitrous, nitrogen, nitrogenous oxides, excuse me, there's other gases, there's other traces, right? Uh, but let me just go ahead and put those in, argon, AR, neon, and E, carbon dioxide, CO2. So, nitrogen, N2, atom or molecule, has to be a molecule because this little subscript here means it's two ends bound together. Okay? There, yeah, take a look at it. N2. It's two ends bound together. Atom or a molecule? It's a molecule. Is it an element or is it a compound? Nitrogen, N2. It's made of exactly the same stuff. It's an element. So, nitrogen is a molecular element. Oxygen. Well, Oxygen, basically exactly the same thing. O2 means there's two O's and then they're bound together. It's another molecular element, right? It's a molecule because there's two of them bound together as a single unit. And it's an element because it's all the same. It's just O's, it's just O's. That's all that there is. Water, H2O, right? Actually, that's, that's an oxygen, actually I should, uh, I should stick with my oxygen theme right there. Oxygen is green. Ah. And then my hydrogens, in this case, I'm going to go with blue. There you go. H2O, water. Water is a molecule because it's made up of three bits, two hydrogen and one oxygen. But it's also a compound because they're different bits, hydrogens and oxygens bound together. So it's a molecular compound. Argon. Well, argon is AR. It's just bits of AR floating around. So argon is made up of atoms that are all the same. So both argon and neon are atomic elements. Okay? Lastly, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, CO2, is going to be made up of a C and two O's. Let me go with you know, green for oxygen. It's a linear molecule, just like that. And so whereabouts do we put that? It's a molecule, definitely. Is it an element or is it a compound? It's just like water, CO2. I hope that helps to explain the difference between atoms, molecules, elements, and compounds. Ugh. Let me tell you, mastering this really helps just in terms of being able to talk talk chemistry. Click like, click subscribe, I'll keep the vids coming, keep the chemistry knowledge flowing. Thank you very much. Chemistry the right way.